In today's post, I'm giving a quick introduction to seeking, one of the most fascinating core emotions. You'll recognize the seeking mode by what the animal is doing. Regardless of the species, animals will generally look for resources. They will investigate and explore using their senses, sniffing, scratching, looking, listening. They'll look curious. You'll see predatory behavior. And if you ask a human who is getting his seeking system activated, he'll mention feeling, feeling expectant, as if on the border of some great discovery. And if you look into the brain to see which neurotransmitters are being released, you'll find dopamine at the heart of the seeking system. Animals and people absolutely love having the seeking system activated. Think of it as being presented with a wrapped gift just for you. You know it's going to be good. It might be just what you want the most, or maybe something else, but still great. So there's an element of surprise, of expectation. The seeking system is activated as long as you don't know what's in the gift. But the moment you open it and see what it is, you snap out of seeking. Seeking takes animals to places where there are resources. And seeking activates several parts of the brain. They learn the way to get there and what signals predict the resources that they'll find. So it's a general purpose find it system. And different animals learn different things, which is one of the reasons why different behaviors are shown. Seeking is also what gets animals into trouble. If they would always consider safety first, they would probably die. So there's a value to this element of risk taking and seeking is what makes animals take risks. It's also what gets them out and about on a bad day. You can think of seeking as a general purpose system. If you, if you're hungry, seeking helped you find food. If you're cold, it will help you find shelter. If you're lonely, you'll find companionship. And if you're exposed to novelty, the orienting response is part of seeking. Animals exploring the environment. Where are the resources and where are the dangers? So if you're exposed to danger, you'll seek refuge. And if annoyed, you'll seek a resolution. And uh, <clears throat> For individuals in the mood, seeking helps find sexual partners. So, seeking gets animals to resources. And they snap out of seeking when they find them into eating or appetitive mode. So, what reflections may we have as pet owners or animal professionals about how the seeking system may impact animals in our care? Well, how we serve food comes to mind. I truly think we do animals a disservice by providing food like this for two reasons. One, their seeking system doesn't get activated when we serve food freely accessible on a plate. Only the other, the appetitive mode. There's no sniffing, no exploring, no digging, no chasing, no dismantling of prey into edible pieces. There's just eating. There's no seeking, just appetitive. And secondly, unwanted behavior is often a result of understimulation. Seeking gets animals into trouble, remember? The urge to seek is a core emotion, and animals will respond to changes and stimuli in the environment by a seeking response. And it's not difficult to imagine that those responses could easily result in unwanted behavior. Another thing that comes to mind is that clicker training involves the seeking system. When training with a clicker, the clicker marks desired behavior and precedes the presentation of something that the animal wants. Food, praise, play opportunities. You get expectation and focus. And clicker trainers have noted that animals learn more quickly they remember better and are more aroused when using a clicker than when training without a clicker. 
And this observation fits perfectly with what's predicted from a core emotional seeking response. So this was a very short introduction of seeking, one of the seven core emotions described by Jak Panksepp, the father of effective neuroscience. And in the upcoming free online webinar, I'll do equally short introductions of the other core emotions. What do they look like? Which neurotransmitters are involved? What significance do they have in animals' lives? And how can we, as pet owners or animal professionals, make animals' lives better by considering these seven core emotions? Now you can always watch the replay if you miss it, but the only way to get access to this free live webinar is by signing up. See you next time.